Leonie, I want to become a true religious. Mary Leonie Martin was born on June 3rd, 1863, with blonde hair and blue eyes, the third child of nine. However, her physical health was not good. After overcoming whooping cough, she contracted measles and had violent convulsions. She was cured of this after her parents prayed a novena for her healing. However, she developed a severe case of eczema, which lasted her entire life. Leonie was a difficult child, prone to tantrums. In 1871, Zelie tried to enroll her at a visitation boarding school where her two older daughters were already studying. However, due to her undisciplined nature and a learning disability, the mother superior rejected her. Zilli's sister, Sister Marie Dosite, who taught at the school, intervened. The mother superior relented, but unfortunately, due to Leonie's unruliness and her inability to learn, she was sent home. In January of 1874, she was allowed to return, but was expelled after three months. As a result, Zeli began home schooling her. In December 1876, Zeli was diagnosed with breast cancer. Leonie was devastated by the news of her mother's illness and spent a lot of time either alone in her room or with the maid. Before Zelie's sister, Sister Marie Dozite, died of tuberculosis in February 1877, uh, Leonie wrote her a letter. My dear aunt, when you get to heaven, will you please ask God to convert me and to give me a vocation to become a true religious. A couple of weeks passed and, and the secret of much of Leonie's bad behavior was revealed. Louis Marais, a local country girl whom Zelie had taken into her, their home in 1865, when she was only 16, worked for the Martin as a maid. She decided to discipline the child who seemed to cause her mistress so much grief. When nobody was around, Louis beat and threatened Leonie in order to satisfy her need for power. The Tyrannical servant forced Leonie to obey no one but her. Leonie was terrified at the thought of the punishment to be inflicted if she behaved for her pardon or to anyone. Then, when Leonie was 12 or 13 and Louise was about 27, Mary overheard the bullying going on in the kitchen. She confronted Louise, questioned Leonie, and told their mother the whole story. Zelis was horrified to learn it had been going on for years. She ordered Louise to leave, but Louise pleaded to stay 
as she had nowhere else to go. Zelie and Louise discussed it and decided it would be too cruel to dismiss her as she had no family. Besides, Zelie was so ill that she needed her help running the household. So they allowed her to stay as long as she had no contact with Leonie and promised to leave after Zelie died. As soon as Louis lost control of her, Leonie's behavior quickly changed and her relationship with her mother blossomed. Zelie wrote to her brother Isador, I cannot help thinking that this conversation is due to the prayer of our sister for everything changed after her death. Leonie allowed her mother to help her transform her life and she stayed at her side until her death in August 1877 when Leonie was 14. Afterward, the family moved to Lysia where Leonie, Celine and Therese were all enrolled in the Benedictine boarding school. After Leonie finished her studies there on October 1st, 1881, she spent her time praying and caring for an old woman who was dying alone. She bathed, clothed, fed and comforted her and even prepared her body after she died. On October 7, 1886, at the age of 23, Leonie entered the Poor Clare Monastery. Unfortunately, the rigors were too much for her to handle and she was forced to leave after two months. In 1887, Leonie made a second attempt at religious life and enter the visitation order. Regrettably, her health again prevented her from continuing and on January 6, 1888, she returned home brokenhearted. Over five years later, in June 1893, when Leonie was 30, she traveled to Cannes for a retreat at the Visitation Monastery. While there, she approached the Mother Superior and asked to enter again. The Mother Superior agreed and she joined them on June 24, 1893. Less than a year later, she received the habit and the name Therese Dozite. On July 29, 1894, after having suffered another heart attack, Louis Martin died. Then, less than a year later, in the spring of 1895, Sister Mary Le Francoise was elected the new Mother Superior of the Visitation Order and created stricter guidelines. Leonie and some of the other postulants found it too hard to follow the rigors of these new rules and were asked to leave. On July 20, 1895, Uncle Isidore picked Leonie up and brought her back to his home. She cried so much that she couldn't speak. At this time, Celine was no longer living with the Garins. Having left for the Camel in 1894, for the next five years that she lived there, Leonie became very close with them. On July 
second, 1897, Leonie went to the Carmel to visit her sister Therese. It was to be the last time she saw her, as Therese was soon moved into the infirmary, and the Carmelite rule did not allow visitors there. However, Therese continued to counsel her through letters. Finally, in 1899, at the age of 36, Leonie entered the monastery of the visitation at Cannes for the final time. On June 30, she received the habit and the name of Sister Francois Therese. On July 2nd, on the year of 1900, Leonie made her final profession and was given the jobs of assistant bursa, nurse assistant in the refectory, and assistant in the sacristy. Her visitation sister described her as displaying pure gentleness, exuberant joy, and great humility. Of her life in the monastery, Leonie wrote, I am as happy as it is possible to be on this earth. During the coming years, she became one of the first and best disciples of St. Therese's way of confidence and love. On September 30th, 1912, while Leonie was chanting the Holy Office, apparition of her sister Therese's hands appeared on her book. Then, in April 1915, it's part of the beatification process for Therese, an examination of her virtues took place at the Kamalai Monastery so that testimony could be taken from her siblings. And so Leonie, along with her mother superior, traveled to Lisa and for the first time in 17 years saw her sisters. Of the next eight days they spent together, Leonie remarked, As we sat together on the step of Carmel, it was like we were together at Le Boussonnet's once more. While in Lisa Louise Marais, the maid from her childhood met with Leonie and apologized for her treatment of her. Leonie thanked Louis for helping to care for her mother when she had cancer and she extended her forgiveness. When the time came for Leonie to leave, she had a hard time saying goodbye to her sisters, knowing she would not see them again on earth. When she returned to Cannes, she had difficulties readjusting. The final separation from her sister and the challenges of practicing the little way were taking a huge toll on her emotionally, Leonie remarked. I belong to a family of saints and I must not blemish that heritage. She especially revere Pauline as a person with great virtues. Around that time, Pauline notified Leonie that she had received permission from the Pope for Leonie to be buried at the Kamalai Monastery. However, she chose to be buried at the Visitation Cemetery. On August 10, 1917, a second exhumation of Therese's remains took place while her sister Celine was wrapping her relics in silk linen. One of Therese's mola fell out and Celine decided to send it to Leonie. 
When she received it, Leoni was overjoyed at having something of her sister. The truth is now on display in Cannes. Teres canonization was scheduled for May 1925 and Pope Pius XI extended an invitation to all the sisters to attend. However, not one of them was able to go. Due to the overwhelming interest in Teres, many visitors came to the visitation monastery to see the sister of Saint Therese. Leonie, being an assistant portress, would answer the door without letting them know they were speaking to her. Once when the priest asked to see her, she replied, I will ask our mother superior, but I do not think she will give permission for Sister Francois Therese to see you. Nevertheless, I can assure you that you will miss nothing. Speaking with her would not be worth your while. He left stunned, seeing it seemed that this sister was belittling Sister Francois Therese. Almost immediately, he met the chaplain of the Carmel, who explained the deception to him. The priest was both amused and edified by her humility. During the month of December 1930, Leonie was blocked by gripper, a viral infection with inflammation of the respiratory tract along with fever, chills, and muscular pain. She already suffered from a number of other illnesses, including migraine headaches and tooth loss. When she got pneumonia, on top of everything else, the visitation sister thought that she would die. Pauline heard about it and sent a telegram to the Kamalai present in Rome asking for prayers. Unexpectedly, Pope Pius XI himself responded back, sending Leonie his papa blessing. Then, on January 18, 1940, Leonie's beloved sister Mary died. It was customary two lay sisters from Leonie's monastery were sent to her funeral. On May 10, 1940, Adolf Hitler army invaded France. The French and German government signed an armistice agreement that called for two zones, one to be occupied by the Germans and the other by the French. Unfortunately, Kahn and Lisa were both in the German occupied zone. Leonie and her visitation sister could no longer ignore what was going on outside the walls of their monastery. Leonie prayed ardently to her sister Therese for the safety and security of their family and their communities. As 1940 was coming to close, Leonie's health deteriorated further. No longer able to walk and suffering from bronchitis, she was moved into the infirmity. During May of 1941, Leonie contracted griefer for the second time and wrote to her sister, I have suffered so much that I have the audacity to believe that I will not go to purgatory. I have no fear of the good God. On the contrary, it's my extreme need of Him that gives me such confidence. 
At the beginning of June, Leonie showed some improvement, and so her community had a celebration for her 78th birthday and her 41 anniversary of profession. On June 12, 1941, Leonie had a shock and was found on the floor unconscious. She woke up hours later and immediately realized that she was paralyzed on one side and could not speak. When Pauline heard about it, she sent two lay sisters with messages from both herself and Celine. They also sent Mary Rosary, Therese professional cross, and Rose from their garden, and Rose from their garden. As her condition deteriorated over the next five days, she grabbed the Rosary and the cross. On June 16, when her visitation sister brought in a replica of the statue of Our Lady of the Smile, Leonie smiled and held out her arms. On June 17, 1941, Leonie's mother, Superior, hugged her twice, once for Pauline and once for Celine. Leonie signed a couple of times and died, surrounded by her visitation sisters. Her body was carried to the chapel choir where despite the Nazi occupation. Many people came to pay their respects. Her funeral was held on June 21, and her coffin was placed in an interior crypt in the visitation monastery. After her death, she was almost forgotten until around 1960, when the nuns of her monastery began to receive letters from all over the world, from parents of special children, from families in conflict, and from persons who struggled to find and fulfill their places in life, of the four sisters of Therese, she is the one being especially considered for beatification. The Bishop of Bayerliza, the diocese where Leonie died, granted an imprimatur for a prayer asking that she will be declared venerable. Through her intercession, God had children and parents together, heal memories and relationship, and restore those in spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical suffering. Leonie shows us that the trauma of the past are no obstacle to wholeness or to sainthood. She modeled the counsel Therese gave to her in her last letter. The only happiness on earth is to apply oneself in always finding delightful the Lord Jesus gives us. On January 29, 2015, Rome Report post a short video chat about Leonie Martin with Father Antonio Sangali, OCD, the Italian Carmelite friar, who is the vice postulator for her cause. Father Sangali is already intimately familiar with the Martin family, for he was the vice postulator for the cause of Leonie's parents, Louis and Zeli Martin, who have since been beatified and canonized. In this video, he speaks of the incredible loyalty with which Leonie practiced Therese's way of confidence and love. 